when the energy sector finds itself at a crossroads. The most dangerous assumption is that these patterns will hold. Well, it seems like it's been one crossroads after another. WTI crude trading today at $60.03 per barrel. Well, that tells one story on the surface, but the fundamentals beneath reveal something far more complex. I'm Mark Roach, and this is Future Wise Energy, an innovative voice, an upstream energy platform supported by individuals where I share my views developed across cultures, technology operating on the gas fields, raising a billion dollar over a billion dollars for startups executing m a 10 billion dollars worth of of deals as well as the leadership in the industry and i draw from a obviously wide range of personal experiences from over 30 years in the industry the divergence playing out right now demands a lot of attention u.s crude production hit a record high of almost 13.9 million barrels per day in the week ending November 7th. That was up 211,000 barrels per day from the prior week. Yet prices are down over 13% year over year. The rig count stands, stands today at around 549. That's down 35 rigs from last November. That's a 6% decline. But output keeps climbing. Well, there's a lot of production that's been drilled and waiting for completion, and they're bringing it on. But the industry, you know, it is accomplishing more with less. A testament to technology, efficiency, longer laterals, and certainly disciplined capital deployment. Oil rigs numbered 417, up three week on week, but down 61 over year over year. Gas rigs, on the other hand, sit at 125, down three from last week, but up 24 from November of 2024. The Permian Basin holds 253 rigs. That's down 52 year over year, but gaining two in the last week. Now, frack spreads have fallen to 173. That's down 28 since the start of the year. A disconnect between drilling and completion activity that reflects operators hedging against price uncertainty. Brent crude tracking at 64, 64 per barrel, maintaining a 460 premium over WTI. That historically, that's pretty much been the pattern, near five dollars historically. Now, that spread has held stable despite all the volatility driven by competing forces, inventory builds, demanding concerns, geopolitical disruptions that refuse to fade into the background. Natural gas presents the opposite narrative. Henry Hub prices have rallied to $4.50 to $4.60 per million BTU. That range in mid-November, a sharp reversal from September's low of 297 and October's average of 319. Month-to-date gains exceed 5.8%. More striking is the year-over-year -year comparison, over 100% higher than November 2024 levels. Uh, uh, they were approximately $2.12 per million BTU last year. The heating season is approaching inventories standing at 3,960 BCF, slightly below last year, but above the five-year average. And record LNG exports are supporting the price floor. U.S. LNG exports are forecast to reach 14.9 BCF per day for 2025, a 25% increase from 2024. Plaquemines LNG in Louisiana ramped faster than anticipated, prompting the EIA to revise the fourth quarter 2025 export forecast upward by 3%. Another 10% increase is projected for 2026. European demand replacing Russian supplies and growing Asian appetite continue to underpin this structural shift. 
Dry natural gas production is expected to hit approximately 118 billion cubic feet per day in 2026. That's up from 107 BCF per day in 2025. August 2025 production reached a monthly record of 117.2 BCF per day. The Permian, Appalachia, and Gulf of Mexico now produce more natural gas than most countries. Appalachia exemplifies efficiency. Output increased 10% year over year, despite a 29% reduction in active gas rigs. On the crude side, U.S. commercial inventories rose by 6.4 million barrels in the week ending November 7th, reaching 427.6 million barrels, the second consecutive weekly build. Stocks remained at about 4% below the five-year average. The Strategic Petroleum Reserve climbed by 798,000 barrels to 410.4 million barrels as the Trump administration continues replenishment. The inventory build was driven primarily by a 1.6 million barrel per day decline in crude exports, which fell from 4.4 million barrels per day to 2.8 million barrels per day. Imports also declined down 703,000 barrels per day to 5.2 million barrels per day. Refinery utilization jumped to 89.4% in the week ending November 7th. That's up 3.4 percentage points. Crude inputs rose to 16 million barrels per day. Gasoline demand averaged 9 million barrels per day. That was up 145,000 barrels per day from the prior week, while gasoline inventories drew down by 945,000 barrels. Distillate stocks fell 637,000 barrels despite rising production. OPEC Plus paused production increases for January, February, and March of 2026 after implementing modest monthly increases of 137,000 barrels per day throughout the late part of 2025. The decision signals concerns about demand weakness particularly in Asia, despite recent stabilization. Eight core members, Saudi Arabia, Russia, Iraq, UAE, Kuwait, Kazakhstan, Algeria, and Oman, have added 2.7 million barrels per day back to markets since April of 2025, fully unwinding their 2.2 million barrel per day voluntary cuts from November of 2023. Now, the group remain, retains flexibility to reverse these increases if conditions deteriorate. The International Energy Agency warns in its November World Energy Outlook of potential oversupply as global LNG capacity surges. Available LNG supply is projected to increase by 50% by 2030, with approximately half coming from new U.S. capacity. The question the EIA posed is stark. Where will all this new LNG go? Global oil inventories continue accumulating, with the IEA reporting a 77.7 million barrel build in September 2025 alone driven largely by floating storage additions. Preliminary October data suggest inventories increased further. The Trump administration has recalibrated its offshore drilling strategy. After proposing leases extending to the East Coast, the White House ruled out Atlantic sales, focusing instead on Gulf of Mexico and Western U.S. waters, a response to political pressures from southeastern states concerned about tourism and environmental risks. President Trump signed Senator John Kennedy's Congressional Review Act res resolution repealing Biden-era archaeological survey requirements for outer continental shelf operations, streamlining permitting for Gulf producers. Interior Secretary Doug Burgum announced plans to repeal 
protections on 13 million acres in Alaska and expand drilling access across public lands. Energy developments has been energy development has been designed a national priority with permits processing maintained even during the government shutdown period recently. Geopolitically, the landscape remains volatile. Ukrainian drone strikes on Russian export infrastructure continue. Strikes on Nerovska, Russia's primary crude export port, is handling roughly 700,000 barrels per day. And multiple refinery targets have deepened Russians, Russia's fuel supply crisis. Luke Oil declared force majeure on some crude cargoes. U.S. sanctions on Russian oil producers effective October or November 21st, 2025 created additional uncertainty regarding Russian exports to India and China. Barclays estimates that if Russian exports fall sharply, Brent could surge above $85 per barrel, well above the bank's base case forecast of $66 for 2026. Elevated tensions between the U.S. and Venezuela, combined with the military buildup in the Caribbean, pose upside risk. Iran's seizure of an oil tanker in the Gulf of Oman heightened tensions in critical shipping lanes. Major producers, including ExxonMobil and Chevron, have shifted priorities toward shareholder returns rather than production growth. Exxon CEO maintains the company will boost Permian output regardless of oil prices, emphasizing disciplined development of low-cost fields profitable at even at $30 per barrel. Chevron's successful acquisition of Hess Corp, finalized July 2025 this year, consolidated its position as a major player in Ghana's prolific Straybook block alongside Exxon. The two competitors now maintain significant overlapping operations in Kazakhstan, Australia, and West Africa, a, a dynamic that may set the stage for further industry consolidation. South America is emerging as the dominant driver of non-OPEC plus supply growth. South America added 560,000 barrels per day in 2025 compared to North America's 480,000 barrels per day. A trend expected to accelerate, with South America projected to contribute 750,000 barrels per day by 2026. Argentina's Vaca Moreta shale field reached approximately 800,000 barrels per day mid-year more than 16% 16% higher year over year and rivaling permian economics guyana's staybook block is estimated to contain over 11 billion barrels with production accelerating toward 1 million barrels per day by 2027 suriname's grand morgu project is expected to commence operations by 2028 adding over 200,000 barrels per day. The Energy Information Administration forecasts WTI crude prices to decline through the end of 2025 and average $55 per barrel in 2026, driven by anticipated inventory builds as global production outpaces demand growth. Natural gas prices are projected to remain elevated with Henry Hub averaging $4 per million BTU in 2026, despite continued LNG export growth. Technical traders anticipate near-term support for WTI at $58 to $59 per barrel, with resistance around $62 to $63 per barrel. Natural gas continues testing key technical levels, with some analysts targeting $4.90 per million BTU, as a potential rally objective before profit-taking price dives prices lower. The upstream sector enters late 2025, defined by divergence between production efficiency and geopolitical uncertainty. 
U.S. crude production sets records despite declining rig counts and a demonstration of industry's capacity to adapt and optimize. Natural gas has staged a recovery on strong LNG export demand and heating season expectations, though long-term oversupply concerns consist as new capacity comes online. Oil prices remain pressured by global inventory builds and demand concerns, offset partially by Russian supply disruptions and Middle Eastern tensions. OPEC Plus has adopted a cautious stance, a tacit acknowledgement of market imbalances. The Trump administration's pro-drilling policies are removing regulatory barriers, though commodity prices remain the ultimate constraint on capital deployment. South American supply growth increasingly overshadows North American production dynamics, reshaping long-term supply architecture. The variables to monitor closely are the implementation of November 21, Russian sanctions, winter weather demand patterns, and December OPEC Plus compliance data. These are near-term catalysts that will determine whether markets stabilize or descend further. The energy landscape isn't shaped by what lies beneath the surface alone. It's defined by how the industry adapts to what's emerging on the horizon. The energy, well, the data reveals efficiency gains, structural shifts in global supply, and policy changes that are rewriting the playbook. The question for investors and for operators is not whether change is coming. It sure, surely is. It's it's whether this capital allocation, risk management, and strategic positioning reflect the realities unfolding in real time. I'm Mark Roach, and this is FutureWise Energy. Keep your wits about you, your eyes wide open, and be ready to improvise.